Georgia recertified its election results on Monday. President-elect Joe Biden is still the winner in the Peach State. Meanwhile, President Trump is criticizing the state's Republican Governor Brian Kemp. The president called on Kemp to call a new session of the state legislature to name new electors in his favor. Kemp is refusing, as doing so would violate state law. It comes as the Trump campaign's legal challenges continue to dwindle, with judges in two more battleground states tossing out cases that sought to overturn the results of the election. CBS News White House correspondent Paula Reed has the latest. Iowa. President Trump lost and the 2020 those, uh, election, but and again he, today argued he, falsely he that he was cheated vote. out of victory. It was a rigged election. And as the courtroom losses challenging the election continue to mount, his lawyer leading that fight, Rudy Giuliani, ended up in a Washington hospital with COVID. Rudy's doing well. I just spoke to him. He's doing very well. Judges in Michigan and Georgia today both rejected Trump campaign-backed lawsuits trying to overturn the results. Stop the steal! Armed Trump supporters protested outside the home of Michigan's Democratic Secretary of State, Jocelyn Benson. Several Georgia election officials have also found themselves under threat. Continuing to make debunked claims of a stolen election is hurting our state. In part because of President Trump's repeated attacks on them. You got to make sure your Secretary of State knows what the hell he's doing. That Secretary of State, a Republican, recertified the results today after a second recount. We have now counted legally cast ballots three times, and the results remain unchanged. The focus in Georgia is now on two Senate runoffs set for early January that will decide control of the U.S. Senate. Republican Kelly Loeffler in a debate last night refused to accept that President Trump had lost the state. President Trump has every right to use every legal recourse available. Tonight, the New York Times is reporting that over the summer, Pfizer offered the U.S. government additional doses of the vaccine, but the Trump administration declined. And now those doses may not be available to the U.S. because they've already been allocated to other countries. Now, the White House is pushing back on this report. Pfizer tells CBS News that it can't comment on confidential negotiations. But tomorrow, President Trump will hold a summit promoting the vaccine. But Pfizer is not expected to attend, and neither is Moderna. Elaine. Paula Reed, thank you. As coronavirus cases continue to surge across the country, President-elect Joe Biden is naming the key members of his administration's health team. They include Dr. Anthony Fauci and a former Surgeon General who is returning to his old job. CBS News correspondent Nicole Killian has the details. Faced with the grim reality of potentially 400,000 dead from coronavirus by the time he takes office next month, President-elect Joe Biden unveiled a health team that he hopes can turn the tide. We will take steps that will change the course of this disease. It features a who's who of scientific and medical experts, including Dr. Anthony Fauci to stay on as chief medical advisor, Dr. Vivek Murthy to reprise his role from the Obama administration as Surgeon General, and Dr. Rochelle Walensky, an infectious disease expert to lead the Centers for Disease Control. We're here to stand up for the right way to do things. One surprise pick, California Attorney General Javier Becerra, who would become the first Latino Health and Human Services Secretary. His nomination comes days after the Congressional Hispanic Caucus pressed the transition for greater representation. Are you satisfied with the president-elect's picks thus far? It was too early to tell. And AACP President Derek Johnson and other civil rights leaders meet with Mr. Biden Tuesday. They want more African Americans in top cabinet posts. For African Americans, we are often seen for our outputs. Can we turn out the vote? Can we assist to get someone elected? But, but we want to make sure that we are also heard for our input. Nicole Killian joins me now. We're also joined by Reuters White House correspondent Jeff Mason. Uh, welcome to you both. Nicole, let me start with you. President-elect Biden introduced key members of his health team Monday. Who are some of the names and what did they tell us about how he plans to address the pandemic? 
Well, I think this rollout, which will occur Tuesday when we'll actually be introduced to these members, is part of a pattern we've seen from the president-elect where he really values experience. And so that's what we're seeing in this new health team that he announced, as well as, uh, you know, following the science, which the president-elect has made clear is how he intends to address this pandemic. And that really is what this health team will be tasked with straight out of the gate. So, for instance, he is keeping on Dr. Anthony Fauci to serve in the capacity of his chief medical advisor. He is also bringing back Dr. Vivek Murthy, who has been working with the president-elect for some time now, but will reprise his role as U.S. Surgeon General. The president-elect also intending to nominate Dr. Rochelle Walensky, who is a renowned infectious disease expert, to lead the Centers for Disease Control. And then more broadly speaking, you know, when you look at the president-elect selection for health and human services, is Javier Becerra. This is someone who didn't necessarily have public health experience, but does have a lot of Washington experience, having served as a former congressman. He was very instrumental in shepherding uh, the Affordable Care Act and also continuing to defend it in court once he became California's attorney general. So uh, all around, uh, once again, really seeing a lot of experience uh, and a focus on science uh, with this new team that he's announced. Well, Jeff, the White House is hosting a vaccine summit on Tuesday. What's the goal of that meeting? And how is the Trump administration planning to address criticism about its plans to get people vaccinated? Uh, well, uh, number one, the, the vaccine tomorrow or the vaccine summit uh, here at the White House tomorrow is meant, uh, according to White House uh, officials, to educate the public about their distribution plans uh, and about the Operation Warp Speed, which is President Trump's uh, effort to get the vaccine uh, ready uh, for distribution once it is approved uh, by the FDA. So I think you'll hear a lot of just kind of uh, information sharing uh, from top officials from the government, as well as uh, corporate officials or representatives who are involved in that distribution, companies like FedEx, UPS, Walgreens, and CVS. Um, but I suspect that this, the summit will also be a little bit of a, an effort to emphasize credit. And the president has made very clear that he wants credit for uh, the speedy development and eventual uh, distribution of this vaccine. So I, I wouldn't be surprised if that is also a key theme. Well, the New York Times is also reporting the Trump administration passed on Pfizer's offer to sell more doses of the vaccine to the U.S. Jeff, what are you hearing more broadly about the U.S. vaccine supply? Well, I was on a conference call with um, an administration official talking about this summit tomorrow, and he addressed that report in the New York Times and said that it was false. Uh, he, say, he said that, um, number one, in the summer that, that, uh, that Pfizer was still in the middle of developing its vaccine and uh, that they had procured enough um, vaccine from, from multiple vaccine candidates to be able to meet demand, and that he was confident that the U.S. government would be able to vaccinate everyone in the United States who wants to get a vaccine by the end of the second quarter of 2021. Well, Jeff, the Senate uh, is continuing to work on another coronavirus relief bill. Where do things currently stand with getting that passed? Well, it's still um, a, a little up in the air. You've seen a little bit more optimism from from people on, on the various sides about that. But, you know, it's it's early December and they've been working on this for a long time and it's still not over the finish line. All right. Well, that's so much news, obviously, uh, interest rather in that uh, developing news. Meantime, Nicole, you broke some news Monday morning about the chairs of the Biden inaugural committee. Who are they and what do they do? Yeah, that's right. Well, the presidential inaugural committee uh, will now have a five, five co-chairs uh, led by Jim Clyburn, who is a House Majority Whip and also the congressman from South Carolina. So he will uh, spearhead uh, the president-elect and vice president-elect inaugural planning, uh, which, you know, now is really starting to get off and running. They officially announced that committee about a week ago. And so uh, joining uh, Congressman Clyburn will be Congressman Cedric Richmond, who 
is also a senior advisor who was tapped to be a senior advisor for the president-elect in the White House, also to serve as director of the Office of Public Engagement. He was also a co-chair of the Biden campaign. He uh, will also be joined by Delaware Congresswoman Lisa Blunt Rochester, who will serve on this committee, as well as Michigan Governor Gretchen Whitmer and Los Angeles Mayor Eric Garcetti. And so, again, all of them will be charged with kind of spearheading the planning for uh, the inauguration. Just a few days ago, the president-elect uh, did kind of temper his expectations, though, for what that might look like in the midst of the pandemic. And all of them are really emphasizing that safety will really be a priority here, uh, again, because of the pandemic. So the president-elect already making clear that some things may have to be scaled back, like the inaugural parade, or uh, possibly that uh, many of these events will have to go virtual, like what we saw during the Democratic National Convention over the summer. Elaine? Really unprecedented times. Nicole Killian and Jeff Mason, thank you.